So hello, the title of my talk is From Tracker to Piano Roll and Back. I'm going to start with a little bit of personal history. So I started tracking on my Atari ST. Um, the snapshot you've got here is a, a, pro a, a port of ProTracker from the Amiga. Uh, around the same time, I got a copy of Cubase, a well-known uh, MIDI sequencer. Um, then after a while, I had a PC and I moved to more sophisticated trackers, like a Fast Tracker 2 and less sophisticated MIDI sequencer like Cakewalk. Um, of course, I started to use Windows more and more, and so I got many of these, and then more of these, and then I switched to Linux. Uh, I guess one can say that for me, Linux came out of the blue. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> what? Oh, that's. Here we are. Yeah, so, I mean, I was fed up with Windows and I wanted to try something different. And I really, I really liked uh, Linux and I pretty rapidly I became a uh, fervent uh, advocate of uh, free and open source uh, software. Um, so I started using a Muse Sequencer and after a while I started contributing. So for instance, the, the pink window with the yellow, uh, the pink and window uh, and yellow window here is an FM synthesizer that I wrote for a Muse sequencer. And that was all great, but uh, I was missing a good tracker. Oh, damn it. And so in 2007, I started that, a uh, tracker inside Muse sequencer, but uh, shortly after, uh, I got a job, and then I got kids, and then I had no time left for this project. But um, my craving for a good tracker was only growing, and so after a few years, I had a relapse. Not a Windows relapse, but a uh, proprietary software relapse. I started using Renoise, and at first it was great, but then... Uh, as time went, I started to miss uh, some features here and there. I mean, that was a bit annoying, but what really pushed me over the edge is that one day um, I was trying to send some CSEX messages to a plugin I was developing, and I couldn't. Uh, after a bit of research, I found that Renoise didn't support CSEX and would probably never do. And this really drove me mad because I knew that if I had the code, I would probably have uh, fixed the problem in an afternoon. I don't mean full support of CSEX, but just passing the message along. And, um, and so this got me thinking, and um, basically, uh, long story short, uh, I dropped Renoise, and I swore to myself that I would never use proprietary software again. Um, and so I, I started to look for alternatives, but I couldn't find anything that was as good as Renoise. Uh, though I did find very promising uh, uh, projects, such as uh, Beast, that uh, incorporates both a piano roll and a tracker. Very much a work in progress, but still. Uh, I also found Radium, that can be quite overwhelming, but is also very promising. And I rediscovered Ardor, which I had known for a few years, but uh, that I have let on the side. And I was very impressed. And it had gained MIDI support, so uh, in 2015, I started that. A, uh, a tracker inside Ardor. Reusability is key. Uh, so w w why uh, a tracker inside a MIDI sequencer, you might ask? Well, 
the idea was to bring together two worlds that were usually separated and to create a synergy between the two uh, approaches. Um, so it's been four years since I started that. And okay, keep in mind that it's still a work in progress, but it's already functional, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you. Um, okay, so here we have an other uh, session uh, with a few tracks and ready instruments in them. Let me uh, create a region. Uh, so, context menu, and I'm going to select the tracker editor. And, okay, it creates this window. I'm going to add uh, a node column. So, here's the, here's the nodes, the channel, the velocity, the delay. Uh, so okay, we're going to track a cheap tune. Um, let me select an appropriate octave. So that's the bass. Um, the color here matches the color uh, of the track. Uh, I'm going to select Step Edit. And let's do it. OK. OK, let me. It's going to be easier. Whoop. Okay, okay. That's that's doing something live. The so obviously if if I'm if I'm going too fast and you want to interrupt me, feel free to do so. I mean I, I think it's pretty obvious what I'm doing now. Okay, let's see if that's what we want. All right, perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Uh, okay, let's let's take care of the drums now. I'm gonna add three regions for the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. We're going to select everything. Context menu. Tracker editor. Okay, there are a few quirks, but uh, let's, let's just add some note columns to each track. And so let's take care of the snare first. That's the easiest. OK, let's select the right octave. All right. Let's add 16 steps. All right. And Whoop, I don't see anything here. Why? Yeah, Free content. Okay. All right. Now let's take care of the hi hat. Let's come back to step two. Uh, what could be right here? Yes. That. Okay, let's do that. All right. That was quick, yeah. Uh, then the bass, the kick, I mean. Right. OK, 
Okay, the cake has a little uh, uh, has a little melodic tone, so we're going to have to uh, make it match the the bass. Uh, so, okay. Is it okay? No. Um, I think it's good. Okay, let's let's hear. Okay, uh, we want to add more velocity to uh, to the snare and the kick. So, okay, I don't know if you see, but the the digit here uh, that corresponds to the units is underlined. Okay, we're going to change that um, to affect the digit that um, corresponds to the ten. So I'm going to change the position here and. And I'm just going to use the uh, num keys to uh, change the velocity of uh, that digit. Okay, we're, we're going to do the same for the bass, for the kick, I mean. Okay. And for the hi-hat, we're just going to add some simple variation. So uh, low volume, high volume, let's say. Uh, Four five four five four five four five four five, etc. Okay, let's listen to the result. Okay, that's too loud. Let's put that at eighty. And I guess the same for the for the kick. Okay, um, so now we're going to add some uh, arpeggio, of course. So for that, I only need to have the uh, melodic elements. So I'm going to select the bass and the arpeggio. Uh, so track your editor. Okay, I'm going to add uh, three node uh, columns. Okay, we don't need to care about the channel, the velocity of the delay here. So, um, okay, let's let's add some 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 chords. Okay. Okay, before we move on, we're just going to add some uh something more to the s to the snare, some variation. So, uh let me just s well keep what we already have and add the snare back. Um so what I'm going to do is add a uh, a roll to the end of this uh, of this bar, 
uh, on the snare, but uh, to do our role well, we want to uh, increase the, uh, to zoom in. So we're gonna select eight, eight rows per beat. Okay, let's, let's go back to the end. And how is that gonna be all right? Oh. Come on. Come on. Okay. So here's going to be our roll. We're going to change the velocities to be more, uh, to add a crescendo. Uh, okay, I guess. And maybe another note here. Yeah, sounds about right. Okay, let's, let's listen to that. Okay, and now all that we need is a melody. So let's create a region here and to track the melody we only need the melodic element. So I'm going to select the bass, the arpeggio and the melody. Uh, let's add a note column and let's see I think it's correct oh okay but let's let's go back to four rows per beat per beat uh, okay So when I mentioned this, the synergy aspect, you've noticed that uh, the current row is synchronized with the playhead. And that can be very convenient to understand where you are in the, in the grid. Uh, likewise, if, if I were to, to move the playhead, uh, I would move the, the current row. And if I modify a note, uh, on the piano roll, it's going to be reflected uh, on the tracker interface as well. Uh, okay, let's complete this melody. Okay, so it's a it's a bit plain, so we're gonna add some ornaments to that melody. Uh, so let's bring the um, uh, pitch band, and and add some automation. So uh, so to enter a value, I can just click enter. The default value is here. Okay, I'm gonna enter this one. Um, here I'm going to enter zero. Let's let's see what it what it does. Oh. Okay. So the the first note of the melody has disappeared. This is a uh, 
this is a problem with order that it's going to be fixed uh, hopefully soon. For now, we're just going to uh, work around this problem by adding a, a small delay. Oh, I need a bigger delay apparently. Let's try 30. Okay. Uh, so let's add some more. Some more variation, one here. Uh, we're going to add one here. Uh, Here, okay. Okay, and so what I'd like to have now is a uh, um, it's a very short note here on the on C five. So for that, on the off note, I'm going to add a negative delay. So let's try minus. 300 ticks. Okay, so that works. And maybe we're going to add. Sorry, you, yep. you made the note shorter? Yeah, shorter, yes. <laughs> by, yeah, by adding a negative delay on the off note. What? The, the equal yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, well, yeah, I, I, I've made the assumption that, like, I, I, in my worldview, everybody knows what a tracker is, and and that's, that's not necessarily necessarily true. Um, so yeah, I, obviously, feel free to interrupt me uh, if something is not clear. Yeah, like I, I, if I were to so. Okay, let's let's make this uh, really clear. So if I if I zoom in here, and I change the delay, it's going to be reflected. So let's add, for instance. I mean, let's let's remove the delay. Okay, we got that. I can increase it. Okay, you see the little note here. Okay. So let's go back to minus 300. Okay. Uh, let's add a delay here as well. And uh, that was another one here, minus 300. And at the end of the melody, I'm going to add a little ornament. So I'm going to increase the number of rows. Uh, per beat and whoops. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's it. Thank you. Right, looks very promising. Uh, so have I understood correctly that it just can edit any kind of MIDI data? So, or do I have to create the MIDI data with your tracker, and then, uh, or can I just import or use it for any already existing MIDI data? So it's completely integrated uh, 
uh, to order. So anything that you create on the piano roll is going to be reflected on the tracker and vice versa. Um, yeah. Okay, and what's, what's, the, uh, what's the status? Is it, is it merged to the main line or is it... Uh so um, it, it's not merged, but it should be merged um, as soon as I consider that it's uh, stable enough to, uh, to be usable. I mean, well, it hasn't crashed, so uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good sign. Uh, um, and uh, I, I'm going to use it extensively uh, before I create the pull request. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, uh, Paul is, is going to decide whether it is included in uh, version 6 or it, it, uh, made it, in it makes it into version 7 or something. Uh, is, it, is it already uh, a, uh, a patch against 6 or 5? What's the code? Yeah, yeah, so the version that you're seeing here is 6. Okay. Yeah. If I import uh, a MIDI file and there are notes not on point, will it be added like, um, will I see um, in the delay uh, column it's shifted? Yeah, yeah, so... so uh, so there, there is an algorithm that is going to uh, dispatch the notes on the tracker grid, and which is going to uh, dispatch it so that they are arranged in some kind of a, a semi-intelligent way uh, to minimize the number of columns that you need. And each node is going to have as, is going to have the proper delay uh, to match the proper timing and so on. I mean, it's it's a complete. It's it. This thing is not. It's not touching any data. It's just it's a, just a representation. Um, uh, there was a small uh, question from the IRC. They asked, "Which synth synthesizer you are using?" Oh, good question. So that's my own synthesizer. Uh, so it's called Zinayumi, and it's, uh, I mean, it's on GitHub, but um, it's still it's still a work in progress. So I don't want to uh, people uh, use it and um, basically it's gonna break backward compatibility. So as soon as um, it it has reached, um, say, a, a fixed uh, state, then I'll produce a release. Uh, it's an emulator of the um, uh, cheap sound of the Atari ST. I, did, I actually didn't write the, uh, the cheap sound emulation, but I'm using uh, Ayumi, which has been written by someone else. And it's just driving uh, Ayumi. I mean, first I have to say this is amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I have many questions, but I'll try to keep it at three. Um, the first one is, is this implemented in Ardor's Lua code, or is this like C++ native stuff? It's C++ native. Okay, uh, so we, I, it, we do need the pull request, cannot just be used at the moment right away, because... What, what? Like, pardon me? Like, if it was Lua, you'd be able to just import it into Ardor and use it directly? But yeah, 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 good question. So, so I wasn't sure about this, so, so to be frank, when I started to implement it, I wasn't aware of the uh, Lua binding. So um, I, I then had a look at it, and I'm not sure if uh, the bindings are expressive enough to allow me that. Maybe they are. But to be frank, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this language. Uh, and. So I'm perfectly fine using C++. Okay. The second question is regarding shortcuts. Because in the Renoise yeah. workflow, we do use a lot of shortcuts. That's what makes it nice. Um, yeah. I, I noticed that you clicked a lot instead of using the keyboard. Is this possible? Is this something you're going to work on still? Absolutely. Absolutely something that uh, I intend to add. Okay. Um, and yeah. Then the final question is, can you automate plug-in parameters with yep. a tracker? Yeah, yeah. Okay, very nice. I mean, yeah. Whoop. <laughs> I can show you that. Maybe it's going to crash, but let's try. 
processor automation. And let's try this. OK, it looks. Yeah. It works, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's going to use the interpolation which is set by the, um, uh, by order. So we can just edit like the points uh, we would like normally edit with the mouse. We can just yeah. type the values in. Exactly, yeah. What if we want a, a jump? What if we want to do a jump and not a, a linear thing? Like, like a square wave kind of thing. So. So, so you would do the same thing as you would do uh, with Ardor. So, like, uh, either, either you you draw it, or you can select, you know, uh, whether you want. Uh, like, let, let me find something. Okay, this one doesn't have that because it's it's MIDI. Um, so, how does that work? No. I guess so here it's yeah. it's going to be linear by default. Mm -hmm. uh, state, no. To be frank, I mean, <laughs> I, as I said, I'm I'm rediscovering order, so I I don't. Uh, it's. What? What do you mean? Uh, you I, move I think uh, I know what you mean because there's a mode to have the automation uh, be like uh, sample and hold mode, not l interpolated. Yeah. But if I think Falk TX means something else. Um, that you can have the automation make a ramp in one point and then like suddenly jump up. So I guess you would have to have like two values in the tracker and yeah. one of them you should have to delay with the ticks to be like as close as possible yeah, to the yeah. other one, right? So th that, that's how I would do it. Maybe there's another way. Uh, if there's a way <coughs> that can be done with the regular interface, and that is not captured by the interface here, uh, yeah, we would need to think about it. Uh, maybe well, maybe um, question regarding the same topic. If you set the resolution to uh, less rows per measure, like oh, what will question. happen if you just say I want to display it like a measure, you have, yes, perfect. <laughs> Does this repeat if you have like a bigger um, MIDI part and the steps like, and the tracker interface is quite smaller than the MIDI clip? What does it happen in this case? I'm sorry, I don't understand. You have a big MIDI clip, but yeah. when you switch to the tracker mode, you switch to to the tracker to be a lot smaller. Does the size is does it match the size of the MIDI clip of of the MIDI area? I don't know how to call it in order. The, so, yeah. The, so you mean the MIDI region? Yes. Uh, so I, I I'm not sure I understood, but like if you resize the MIDI region, it's going to be resized here as well. It's it tries to be to reflect if, if if it doesn't it's a bug because it should be it should be completely integrated and reflect every operation that happens on the regular interface okay that that was the question yes okay thank you There's another question from the IRC regarding synthesizers. They say you worked on a soft, th soft synth that uh, emulates a Roland D50. Uh, can you make a comment about its status? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we can be grateful of this, uh, of this 
emulator because this is actually what pushed me to, to work on that as well. Because when I mentioned that I couldn't send the CSEX messages to um, the uh, soft synths I was working on, the, it was precisely the Wallen D50. Um, <coughs> so the, the status is pretty, uh, uh, it doesn't do much, but uh, <coughs> it barely plays, I think, a square wave, but the, there's a lot of code which is in place to where I just need to, to fill the, uh, the blanks, basically. So it's, it's, yeah, just needs time and love and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, resume work on that as soon as the tracker interface is uh, fully functioning. And by the way, uh, <coughs> like if, if anybody wants to help, it's like very, very, very welcome because it's a lot of work. I mean, to get that, it took me four years. Obviously, I have a full-time job, and it's, it's, I can only do that during my spare time, but uh, it's, it's a lot of work, so yeah, help, super welcome uh, to speed things up. Um, what does one need to do if you want to use this right now? Like if you if you, if, yeah. you, if I want to go home and and try it out, what do I need to do? Yeah, you just clone my uh, uh, the version of Otter on my GitHub. Uh, yeah, I guess. Like, uh, it? So it was more more a general question. You have to compile it yourself. That's yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess anybody who knows uh, how to compile is able to find to find your. Yeah. Um, Repository. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask about the synthesizer you shown. Uh, do you plan to make a, a user interface for it, or do you need some help with that? No, I, I mean, like, if someone wants to make a user interface, that would be great, uh, but this someone is not going to be me. Um, like because I, I don't have much interest into uh, into that. But. So I hope there's some other people who can help you with that. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. And by the way, what's the format of the plugin? Is it VST, LV2, or something else? Uh, so the one I've loaded here is VST. Uh, eventually, um, I intend to support VST, uh, uh, DC, and uh, LV2, but it's just it happens that VST was was the most uh, mature, so that's why I used it for I, the presentation. I can help you. Yeah, I can help you perhaps with supporting more formats. Okay, that's great. Yeah, just plug it in into the thing I did, DPF, and you get the JAX standalone and LV2 and SSI and everything at once. Yeah, 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 that's great. I mean, I started to look into LV2 and uh, I was a bit overwhelmed, and and that's actually why I went with VST first. I can try to clone it and do a like a little port to the EPF and then you get everything else for free. Okay, great. Nice. <laughs> I want to use it. Thank you. Thank you.